How do prosperity preachers live with themselves? How do Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Joyce Meyer, Paula White, and all these other fakes live with themselves every day knowing that they're conning people and stealing people's money, just doing everything that's just despicable to the eyes of God? Uh, here are some reasons that I thought of when I was just sitting around thinking about this, thinking how do these people live with themselves doing this every single day for years and years and years. It's one thing to commit a sin and then feel bad about it, but it doesn't seem like these people even feel bad about it. But number one, how do prosperity preachers live with themselves? I think it's a seared conscience. First Timothy 4, 1 through 2 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some should depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now the context of these verses is talking about men forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, but it shows that your conscience can be seared and that you can give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. But what I believe is some of these prosperity preachers started out sincere then fleshy desires kicked in then they got a little deeper they let their conscience get seared and they let unclean spirits get involved now it's easy and natural for joel osteen to smile as he lies like a dog how can you get up and lie and know that you're lying and smile now it's easy for td jakes to act like he's got the holy ghost power on him when Tyler Perry lays his hands on him and all that stuff. How is that easy? How is it easy for him to shake and act like he's getting something from God when he knows he's lying in front of millions of people? How is it easy for Stephen Furtick to call Joyce Meyer one of the greatest Bible teachers and have her preach to his congregation? It's like when you sin in the past, the more you did that sin without confessing it, the easier it became. And the more they lie and deceive, it just becomes a part of that person. They give themselves over to it, to the point that they are robbing, naive, and gullible, and sincere Christians out of their hard-earned money. So it's a seared conscience. Uh, they, if... It doesn't seem like their conscience is bothering them at all. I mean, Kenneth Copeland has been a crook for 40 or 50 years now, and he's never stopped, so he has to have a seared conscience. And next, I think it's a lying spirit. First Timothy 4, 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some should depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, you may not know this, but the Lord himself will send a lying spirit, and he will put it in the mouth of preachers as a judgment on people. Because if the preachers get bad, then the people aren't as understanding of the times. They don't see sin as bad as it is, and they, they don't, they, it makes them forget about what God's done for them. 1 Kings twenty two twenty three says, now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. All these crooks on TV are a judgment on a people that has rejected God's word. It's a judgment on a people that's accepted baby killing and sodomy and everything that calls everything God calls an abomination. Uh, America doesn't deserve good preaching. America deserves every false prophet that God can throw at them. We deserve to be deceived. And this is just a sneak peek of what's to come in the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation. Because he said, Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, 2 Thessalonians 2, 11 through 12 says, And for this cause shall God, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, 
that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The false prophet, part of the satanic trinity, which is the Antichrist right-hand man, he will blow all of these prosperity preachers out of the water. He'll have power and miracles to deceive the masses with. He'll do stuff like Benny Hinn does, except it'll be real. Only the power will come from the devil and not from God. But this is what this world gets for rejecting truth. Because they rejected the Savior. They rejected the King James Bible. They've rejected righteous moral living. And now they reap what they sow. Because if you reject truth, you'll accept deception. So I believe they got a seared conscience. I believe they've got a lying spirit in, them, in their mouth. And number three, I believe no chastening from God has caused them to be able to carry on this long without feeling bad about what they're doing. Hebrews 12.8 says, But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Now, I don't like to judge a man's salvation, so I'm not going to say which preachers are saved and which ones aren't saved. But a good reason they can go on being a devil every Saturday, every Sunday morning is because they aren't getting chastened. But think about this too. Not being chastened is also a judgment from God. He just keeps letting them deceive and get away with it. He just lets them get away with being a lying devil. And if they keep getting by with it, then they think they're getting away with it. But they aren't getting away with anything. Sometimes it takes a while for God to bring judgment on a person. And the longer God goes without chastening a person, the worse it is for that person. I mean, maybe they would have gotten right years ago if God hadn't taken a chastening hand off of them. Next, how do they keep doing this without feeling bad about it? It's because they're living comfortably. 1 John 2.15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So they love the world, and they are living comfortably in this present evil world. They have mansions, expensive cars, the nicest clothes, jets, airplanes. Nothing wrong with it if you can get it honestly, but these men are getting it dishonestly. Uh, Kenneth Copeland is a crook. And he has the most devil-possessed looking face you'll ever see on a preacher. Look him up and just look at those eyes and that smile he's got. But he, he's been full of the devil and serving the devil for years and years since like 1967. How do you live that wicked as an ungodly liar? Just a pathological liar deceiving sincere Christians. Deceiving God's people for 50 years. It's because he's living comfortably off of people's money that he's not supposed to have. That's how he can live with himself because he's living comfortably. He's not hitting rock bottom. Uh, Copeland is 82 years old and that old man is full of hell and the devil. Serving his belly and money. Uh, Joel Osteen's mansion is $10 million. His net worth is $40 million, they say. Uh, he won't preach on sin, and you can't even preach the gospel without mentioning sin. So how can he say that he's even preaching the gospel? Because Paul said Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Uh, Benny Hinn started preaching in 1974, and all this time he's been a crook, living comfortably off of sincere and deceived Christians. So what's going to happen when they die? Uh, these guys are getting up in their years. If they aren't saved, I'd hate to go to hell after living a life of stealing all in, the, all in Jesus' name. And you may disagree, but I believe these men are more more wicked than your average thief or gang member running around on the street. They're stealing it. They're just doing it by deception. And next, I want to say it pays to serve the devil. Did you know that sometimes it pays to serve the devil? The more influence and the more pull you have on this world, 
the more the devil will use you. And these prosperity fakers have been used of the devil for years. They have sold themselves to work evil in the sight of the Lord, and they are sold out to Satan for money. As long as they keep on deceiving the deceiving, the devil will keep on keeping them up. First Timothy six ten says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money is the root of all evil. And that's what they have. Titus 1, 10 and 11 says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. They're doing it for dirty money. 1 Peter 5, 2 says, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. And all of these men are living for the devil, and it pays to serve the devil. But it doesn't pay for very long. The pleasure of sin only lasts for a season. Uh, Hugh Hefner lived a life of pleasure, but then died and went to hell. It didn't last long. The things that give your flesh a thrill will sometimes only last a few moments. But how does T.D. Jakes get on there and not be against homosexuality when he knows it's in the Bible that it's wrong? How does Joyce Meyer and Paula White continue to preach and teach men even though the Bible says a woman is neither to teach nor to usurp authority over the man and that the woman's supposed to be in silence? Uh, how do they continue living with themselves? How do they continue getting dirty money Hiding behind the name of Jesus Christ because it pays to serve the devil. First Kings twenty one twenty says, And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Proverbs twenty three five Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not, for riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Prosperity preachers spend millions of dollars so they need to get more hurt and sincere Christians money. There are millions of hurt Christians and sincere Christians just sending them their money, sending them millions of dollars. Joyce Meyer's a millionaire. Paula White's a millionaire. Uh, the Bible plainly says that a woman is not to teach nor to usurp authority over the man. Now, women are the best people. A good woman is the best person in the world. An evil person, an evil woman like Joyce Meyer and Paula White are the most evil people in the world. Uh, men aren't better than women, but the Bible gives the place on... Uh, in the home and in the church uh, a woman isn't supposed to preach and the man's supposed to be the head of the house that's just the way God had it it's not being sexist but these people aren't hungry for souls they're not hungry for the word of God they're hungry for your money uh, Creflo Dollar is hungry for your money uh, they think he's a great man of God, so they, out of sincerity, send him money thinking that it's helping God. And probably, I believe the Lord will bless that person because they gave it out of ignorance and God looks on the heart. But Creflo Dollar is going to have to pay in hell or in the flesh if he's saved for lying and stealing people's money. And if he's saved at the judgment seat of Christ, he's not getting anything. He got everything down here. And I remember as a lost person, I came to times in my life where I would get sick of my sin. And I remember intentionally turning on the TV to the TBN channel or whatever. And I remember seeing Creflo Dollar preach. And I thought, man, this guy is lucky. He knows he's going to heaven. He's got peace with God. And I remember seeing all those TV preachers like Joel Osteen and Joyce Meyer. And I thought, man, these guys are real Christians. And I remember seeing the Pope on the news. And I thought, 
he was the closest you could get to Jesus on earth. I thought all he did all day was sit in a chair and drink water and breathe. And you're not going to learn how to be saved from these people. But I thought they were acting like a real Christian is supposed to act. But as a lost man, I had no idea they were ministers of the devil just appearing as angels of light to deceive me. And that's what happened. I mean, I didn't send them money. It's the opposite. I couldn't stand to watch that junk for five minutes. It made me think that it was that Christian, the Christian life was the most boring thing in the world. But real Bible believing study and real Bible preaching is the most exciting thing in the world. A real Bible preaching preacher from a man, not a woman, who doesn't act like a woman and who is a believer of God's word will put men under conviction. It'll make men, men interested in the Bible when they hear the doctrine. But that fake junk on TV just turns men further and further away from the truth because it's effeminate junk. When all you talk about is God loves you so much and sending your money and speaking in tongues and holy laughter and, and all of this char charisma and emotion without the Bible... That only attracts women, usually. And there are exceptions, but how many real men do you know who say, I just love to listen to Kenneth Copeland and Joel Osteen and Creflo Dollar. I don't know that I've ever heard of a man who listened to that junk on TV. But these men and women, fake preachers, are used by the devil to push many people away. And another reason I believe they can go on doing this is because they're not getting really any resistance. John 4.44 says, For Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. But these men and women are praised by the world. I mean, even the president likes them. The president likes Paula White. And that's why you will see them on The View and a bunch of other worldly shows. They stand up for nothing. So... They don't have anybody that's their enemy. They don't have any enemies. They represent another Jesus, not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. They represent a Jesus that is acceptable to the world, not the real Lord Jesus Christ. John fifteen eighteen says, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. The only resistance they get is from real Bible believers. Maybe a street preacher outside of their church and sermons across the country from Bible believers that... They don't even know about because maybe just a handful of people hear it. So how do they live with themselves? They don't hear the sermons against them. They don't think the street preachers outside of their church are, are worth listening to and that they're just a bunch of nobodies. They think King James Bible believers are a bunch of hateful fanatics. The world likes them so they are living comfortably in this world. And you know you're accepted when rappers even speak well of you. I mean, the rappers speak well of Creflo Dollar. Luke 6.26 says, Woe unto you, when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. So if you're a preacher, and your funeral is televised on TV, and you have your own Hollywood star on that sidewalk out there where those rich people live, then you've done some compromising. If the Pope likes you, you've done some pro compromising. You've got problems. When you sink so low that you go on TV and deny that Jesus Christ is the only way, you have problems, you've compromised, you've, you've, uh, you're not going by the Bible, and you are seeking popularity over pleasing God. And another thing is, there's no fear of God before their eyes. Romans 3.18 talks about people who have no fear of God before their eyes, and we all don't fear God at times. Really, every time you deliberately sin, you are lacking the fear of God. But these TV preachers and mega church pastors, I wonder if they even believe that there is a God. How can you get up in front of millions of people and beg for money to do God's work when you know you're just going to buy a boat with it or a private jet or your third house, your third mansion? How do you fear God if you claim to be a preacher? But get on TV and won't say the word sin or hell or abomination. Do you really fear God if you get on TV and say you don't think homosexuality is a sin? If somebody acts 
ask that question? The quick and easy answer is yes. But there are a lot of different reasons why these wicked men can live with themselves. When I see them, I don't understand it, but I know that these are some of the explanations. But I hope that you will get a hold of real Bible preaching. There is a lot of good preachers that you can listen to out there. Uh, men like Danny Castle, Gene Kim, Robert Breaker. I mean, this is just on YouTube. Charles Lawson. Uh, Donnie Dalton. Ralph Sexton. All the old preachers. Like Maze Jackson, Billy Kelly. Larry Winkler. There's tons of good preachers that you can find on the internet to listen to. You don't have to turn on the TV and watch TBN and CBN or whatever that other station's called. There's real Bible preachers that Christians can turn on and get fed the Word of God. Uh, you can turn on Final Fight Bible Radio, a free app that you can get on the phone or listen to it on the internet with real Bible preaching, not fake prosperity preachers begging for money all the time. That's not real Christianity, and that's not the Bible. But this has been How Do Prosperity Preachers Live With Themselves.